you know, you know, I've spent a lot of time thinking and toiling over how to best train for UTMB. I think I'm slowly but surely dialing in on, on a pretty good training philosophy. Unsurprisingly, it, it, it's centered around running lots. <laughs> Uh, and today's uh, Wednesday, which is my long run day. So I'm gonna do that. Coffee, porridge, and then we'll chat. Sock, sock, sock. Yes. Um, That, that was a good one. It stung. It stung a little bit, but the good kind of sting, you know? Like, you need that sometimes. <laughs> so training for UTMB. I think before I kind of jump into my approach, uh, I thought it was probably helpful to talk through why I self-coach. The way I see it is like this. Uh, on the one hand, a uh, coach can bring accountability and expertise to the relationship. But what's compromised there is the coach actually understanding how you're feeling. Communicating that uh, is paramount in a coaching relationship, uh, but I think there's always a little bit that's lost in that communication. The flip side, uh, when you go my route of self-coaching, is that uh, you have intimate knowledge of how you're feeling and tolerating your training load. The trade-off is the lack of expertise. Now I guess uh, in choosing to go it alone, uh, what I'm doing is committing myself to understanding as much about training as possible. Now I'm the type of person that uh, will do a deep dive on just about anything that tickles my fancy and running is no different. So in this age of information, uh, I've chosen to try and understand as much about training theory as I can and apply that directly to myself. Before we go any further, I should say that I'm not a coach. While I choose to be my own guinea pig with regards to training, I'd be very wary taking any advice from me. But that being said, here's my take on training for UTMB. <laughs> So the state of things is, as of today, there is 102 days until UTMB 2023 kicks off. I'll be there on the start line and hopefully over these next 100 odd days, uh, it's enough time for me to put together and invest in a solid training block, which hopefully leaves me in the best shape possible to put together a pretty good performance. Now, over the past few years in writing my own training programs, I've been guided by two underlying principles. The first is the 80-20 principle. And that simply is that 80% of your training should be really easy and 20% should be hard. And for the most part, that remains unchanged. I think that's a good allocation of effort across a week's worth of training. And the other thing is that I tried to keep my easy stuff easy so that I could make my hard stuff as hard as possible. Uh, that, that polarized distribution of effort across the week has left me in a reasonable place, but recently I've made a small shift in my approach to training. And look, while it's based on a fairly cursory understanding of exercise physiology and, and training principles, I'm confident in my training philosophy for UTMB as it stands right now. The best way for me to explain it is like this. I like to think of training like a pyramid, broken up into three parts. Easy, moderate, and hard. Now you can think about this as 80% easy, and the hard and moderate is making up 20% of my training volume. Recovery runs, long runs, most runs, 
end up existing in this easy zone. But it's the allocation of effort in the hard stuff that's really shifted for me recently. Now, while I used to take the approach that all of the hard stuff would be balls to the wall, tasting lactic in your mouth, doubled over gasping for air at the end of the session, I'm not sure that's the best way anymore. You see, as I understand it now, the purpose of the hard stuff is not so much to try and raise the ceiling of how hard you can go for as long as you can possibly go, it's more about stressing the mechanism that is processing the lactate you're producing. And now while it would be easy to be led to believe that harder is better in that scenario, it doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Intensity controlled threshold training seems to be where it's at. <laughs> Now, there are much smarter people than I doing much more research into this and applying it with much more authority than I have, namely David and Megan Roach and Olaf Alexander Boo. So now, the majority of this 20% of my training, the hard stuff, is actually being spent in an intensity controlled output. I'm still getting the biomechanical and VO2 benefits from real hard training just in a much, much smaller quantity. Usually at the end of my intensity controlled threshold sessions, I'll throw in a few strides. More broadly speaking, my training trajectory is gonna look like this. I'm gonna accumulate as much volume as I can sustainably tolerate here. My hope is that that gets up towards 100 mile weeks. And while for sure it's important to accumulate a lot of vert when training for a race like UTMB, I'm not gonna go crazy because I'm privileged enough and have prioritized it enough to be spending the six weeks before UTMB over in the Alps training. <laughs> and so my hope is that the fitness that I accumulate here will easily translate to big mountains just before UTMB. And that's, that's pretty much it. It's my understanding and, and also my anecdotal experience of, of this style of training over the past few weeks is that it's sustainable. I've never felt better running 120 kilometers a week than I have done now. And look, maybe that's just a product of the accumulated training of the past few years finally catching up with me, but I feel good about where I'm headed. I feel confident in this approach that it's gonna leave me in the best shape possible come September. That's about all I got. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I guess I'll catch you in the next one.